We are Susie, Martin, and Julian, a family of Geminis based in Seattle. While it doesn't actually rain in Seattle all the time, spring is not known for being very dry, and this is typically when we need a warm, sunny escape. So we're headed to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico for the first time. It's also our very first flight with our baby and his first international trip. Join us as we drink and eat our way through Cabo and figure out how to travel with a baby. We made it to Mexico with our baby. That's right. <laughs> I love this airport because there's like an open bar like right outside. Oh, He's so excited to be in Mexico. Oh, we got it right. Not as much as we are though. That's true. First oh, trip abroad in over two years. Oh. All right. Well, we just checked in all the way from Seattle to Cabo. Half a day of travel. Baby did fantastically well. I'm giving a margarita that's called a greet you over here. And our hotel is awesome. Marina Fiesta, I think so. Right on the marina. I'll explain to you why I booked this in particular as we go along here. Are you enjoying your crib? Are you happy? Yeah, she actually is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is the 500 pounds of baby food. So as you can see, Julian has gotten a little bit particular about the kind of food that he likes to eat. And by particular, she means salmon, wild caught, bison, yes, grass fed. He will definitely be well fed. Uh, we will as well, but we need to find food, which we will do right after we feed him and unpack a little bit. We haven't hit a bite since last night. Yeah, it's been like rush. And it is like... 3.30 p.m. So we've been going, going, going since 4.30 this morning. Yeah. Almost 12 hours. I've had more alcohol than food today. <laughs> That's Mexico for you. Uh, well, the night is winding down. We are so tired. We got up at 4.30 a.m. This guy slept a lot, but not us. We're at a place called the Shrimp House, and they promise that the food here is shrimply delicious. So I love shrimp, so I have higher expectations. All right, it has arrived. So I got the boiled shrimp as well as the boiled lobster. I think they're both Mexican. At least the shrimp definitely is Mexican. They give you a really big vat of like melted butter here. Oh, that's garlic butter even. So good. Really, really good shrimp. Really sweet and the butter and the garlic go really nicely along with it. Indeed, shrimp are caught fresh in the area and shrimping season usually goes from September to March. from Mexico, we made it. It was a, not a long trip and not a hard trip, honestly, it was quite all right. It wasn't too bad, it was like a three and a half hour flight, which is actually less than we expected. We thought it was gonna be like four hours. So yeah, really nice direct flight, directly from Seattle, and we're here in Cabo San Lucas. So yeah, I've heard a lot about it, never came. I always thought it's just like strictly for tourism, which it does appear to be, but we're in such a phase that we actually have some needs met here with our baby, so it's a good place for us to escape within three and a half hours from the north. So this is our first full day here and we are starting with breakfast. Well, the food has arrived and looks good, at least the first course. Yes, the first course is chorizo con papas, or mm -hmm. potatoes. And Julian's looking at it like, oh, he's already tried to reach for it. He but really it wants too it. It's spicy for him, unfortunately. But maybe he can have some beans. No? Oh, little jivo. <laughs> Let's try this. I love it. <laughs> so. Well, now our main courses have arrived. We got chilaquiles. We got the beef and the red sauce. And Martin got the chicken and the green sauce. Man, it's really, really good. Everything. Very good flavor. If you don't know chilaquiles, they're basically like tortilla chips. And then they're kind of drenched in like a salsa, either a red salsa or a green salsa, usually some sour cream, and either eggs or meat. So yeah, this is a really nice treat. I was really hoping for this for breakfast, actually. So I'm glad we found it. Julian's <laughs> eating his first tortilla. It's a corn tortilla. I think we've come to the conclusion that Mexican food is one of our favorite foods, even when we're not in Mexico. Because even before we got here, we were eating Mexican food. Even the night before, we had like Tex-Mex. And I was like, I don't mind because we'll be eating our weight in tacos and, you know, chilaquiles and all that stuff. Well, we're walking around Cabo after a lunch or a breakfast, running some errands, such as finding a lost credit card, which we found, finding some hair bands and diapers and wipes. And it's been pretty interesting to get off of the main beach strip. Yeah, we're um, going through the back streets, soaking in all the splendor here. I would say this, it's very functional. You know, whatever you need is there. You just have to kind of look around. I don't even think most of these things are on Google Maps. You just go and see for yourself. And we found what we needed, truly. In terms of the geography and the way that 
things look here, it's kind of like Arizona, but better because it's next to the beach. We also really lucked out with the weather. Uh, initially, we thought it was going to be about 90 degrees or like high 80s, but the forecast, I think, changed recently and now it's going to be in the 70s. I think it was about 75 yesterday. Should also be in the low 70s today, which is much better. It's still warm if you're directly in the sun, but in the shade, it's actually kind of cool. But yeah, this is one of the random back streets back here. It's uh, mostly built, you know, people's houses, but occasionally you run into like an empty lot here and there. There's the little prints. I got this uh, sunshade for the stroller off of Amazon. It's been working out pretty well. Oh, you just woke up. You can see it's a lot louder and busier the closer you get to the tourist zone. The street also gets a lot wider and a lot more businesses that look like they're catering more to tourism. If you ever see one of these roadside fruit stands in Mexico, definitely stop by for a vaso de fruta. This is piña para la niña. Piña. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> oh yeah, these are good. Mm. You choose, you're the chef, maestro, <laughs> teacher. I always remember these uh, stands when I go to Mexico, the best juice comes from them. And they have like a menu of juice already. Have mango with chili here. Mm. So good. That chili is nice and salty. And it goes with that mango so well. You give it a bit with salt and chili, it's so good. Mm -hmm. mucha fruta. <laughs> Hoy, hoy, hoy tenemos fiesta. Ah. <laughs> These fruit bowls are usually served with a chili lime seasoning that adds a savory element to the sweet fruit. Okay. Basura. Sí, allá. <laughs> Para las vacas. <laughs> Qué grande. <laughs> Gracias. I have the mother of all fruit bowls here with that nice salted chili on it. God, it smells so good. But yeah, that's some of the best fruit I've ever had. And he was saying too that the the basura, the fruit pits and the skin, the cow eats it. So that's great, very sustainable. Now we're back walking down the marina strip where all the tourist establishments are. And you can, I mean, it feels like you're back in America practically. Might be time for the pool now. We'll see how, how Julian likes swimming. He certainly liked his bath. I'll show you guys later how he's being bathed here, but he fits perfectly in the little kitchen sink. In case you're curious, this is how we're bathing him in here. We didn't bring a little baby bathtub. He just <laughs> happens to fit perfectly in the sink. All right, as you can see, this resort is pretty cool because it has a whole kids area. It's got a whole pool area and splash zone just for kids. So this is going to be Julian's very first time swimming or interacting with water. All right, Julian, this is water. You know it's on the bath. <laughs> Yeah, it's now. Are you impressed? <laughs> It's only the biggest thing in the world, mm -hmm. the Pacific Ocean. And so now we're in the main beach of Cabo San Lucas. And it's a cool beach, you can see it around us. On this side over here is the famous arch, but it's invisible until you take a boat to it. And down here it goes for a long time, you know, there's so much development here. Overall, it's a nice beach. It's not the nicest beach, I would say. The sand is on the coarse side. The water is a little cool to my taste, but if it was hotter in the day earlier, it's probably good. Another thing here is uh, it's kind of European style where they develop the hell out of the waterfront and play loud music and have nightclubs and stuff like that. That's something you see here and in Europe, not so much in the USA where coastlines are very much protected and left natural there. You notice we have Julian here on my shoulders. That is um, so that he can pass through here. He still yes. can't walk. As you can tell, this is not very stroller friendly. It is all sand. And actually the marina where we are staying is very stroller friendly. There's a nice wide path, but we've now walked it at least three or four times. <laughs> and it's great, but it's nice to also have the beach as an alternative. And it's a big beach. It goes for a while, it looks like. It's huge, yeah. So that was my strategy, booking on the marina itself 
because you can walk with a stroller. But we, where we are is also right around the corner from the main beach. So we get both. And so the booking is very successful. On top of that, it turns out they have a little baby proof room. But because of COVID, it's been kind of closed, but they let us in there for, uh, for a little bit for Julian to play around, which is great. Yeah, and he played with the balloon for the first time, which was very cute. And then he slept a lot on Susie's sunburned shoulders. Mm -hmm. So now he's on my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Just a gringo in his half Korean son. Already? Huh? When in Mexico, you've got to have tequila, but you've got to do it the right way. First they eat salt, right? Yes, salt and then cream on food. Okay. It's a good tequila. Huh? Smooth, yeah. Uh, yeah. No bad, yeah. Quite a few restaurants in Cabo will offer to make guacamole tableside. This is a great way to interact with your server and also learn how to make authentic guacamole. Avocados are from here? Yes. No, not from here. No? From Mexico. Mm. Okay. But the only the avocados, you know, they're grown all over uh, one place, only in the state of Michoacán, mm. huh? here in Mexico. Huh. Would you like some onion too? Yeah. There you go. That's great. And then my son proved that he was braver than I was. Biting into the lime. He's not that phased. <laughs> wow, boss. His mom would be much more of a yeah. face. <laughs> Have you ever seen a baby like this? To be honest, Mexico is one of my favorite countries to travel to. To the point I'm considering buying a condo down here. Not exactly in Cabo, but I have some ideas and it's our quickest way down here. We really love it. It's endless summer. People are very hospitable. Culture is vast and rich. It's such a huge country, so much to see. <laughs> For our next meal, we consulted Google Maps and ended up at a gem of a restaurant. The owner was from Veracruz, and she cooked up some of the best authentic Mexican food that we had on this trip. I'm having a pozole, which I really like getting in Seattle. I want to see what it's like in this place. People say on Google Maps that it's uh, traditional, authentic, blah, 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 five star. The pozole is really nice. There's big chunks of meat as well as avocado. Oh yeah, the broth is really nice. It's not too much. It's uh, really well flavored. <laughs> Mm. Even better <laughs> with a homemade tortilla. <laughs> and that's authentic Mexican video. And Martin's been perfecting his video recipe, <laughs> so now he has a, another thing to stack it up against. Yeah, and the birria is actually from Baca, from Tijuana in the north. <laughs> El tiene diez meses. Oh, ¿cómo se llama? Ah, Julio. Julio. <laughs> Julio regalado. <laughs> ¿Qué fue chupa? ¿Qué mucho tal? Baby's first swimming pool action. Are you ready? For our final meal in Cabo San Lucas, we went to Los Tres Gallos. Unfortunately, we had a sound failure here, and we happened to experience not only our best meal in Cabo here, but also the best mariachi band. Ugh, I really wish you could hear them. But on to the food. The feast started with grilled bone marrow, topped with salsa and flank steak. 
Then we had a Caesar salad prepared table side. Neither of us usually like Caesar salads, but this one tasted so good. Maybe it's because the Caesar salad was invented in Baja, Mexico. For the main courses, I got grilled totayaba, a fish only found in the Sea of Cortez. It had a fresh, clean, and buttery flavor. Definitely a unique tasting fish. Meanwhile, Martin got what he considers one of the best steaks of his life. It was so tender, juicy, and well marinated, and I kind of wish I got the steak. So we finally got on a boat on the last night here. Julian can barely take it, he's falling asleep. He's already asleep, in fact. Oh. But yeah, we're here on a glass bottom boat. This is actually pretty cool. And we're heading out to see the main attraction here in Cabo, which is the arch of the rocks. This distinct rock formation is on the extreme southern end of Mexico's Baja California Peninsula. Well, everything comes to an end, doesn't it? Yeah, sadly, after our week in Cabo, we are finally heading home. I actually think a week is a good amount of time. I feel like we did enough without being too exhausted and we still feel really relaxed and kind of ready to head back. That's right, and we are liking this place. We're liking it a lot, so we made a turn. Actually, we will return, but not that much. Mm -hmm. It's the quickest escape for us, and we enjoyed the time. The food in particular was superb. There are many beaches. We only got on a boat briefly, but there's so much boating to do. Uh, we also like off-roading, though we didn't have our Jeep, so Baja, as you know, has the biggest off-roading race in the world, so we can come for some off-roading next time. And good food. I think that was the part that really surprised us the most about Cabo. Every single meal was really exceptional and really stood out. So we will definitely be back for food, beach, and sunshine. This trip had many firsts for our baby. He was able to get on a plane to go to a foreign country. First airplane ride, first foreign country, first uh, beach swim, pool swim. Stood up. He stood up. I don't know if we got it on video, but he stood up in his crib the other day for the first time all by himself. His first lime, first guacamole. First mariachi band, which mm -hmm. was a bit of a problem because mm -hmm. it was really loud, but <laughs> <laughs> he's recovered now. He's mm -hmm. happy. First boat ride. Yeah. So yeah, this is a great trip for Julian. So many firsts. Mm -hmm. Mexico is very special for many reasons. <laughs> Adventuring today with a little car and a baby. Pretty funny, but it's what you gotta do. You can't put your life on hold just because you hit a baby. We are attempting a day trip with a baby, which is, yeah, <coughs> a lot of stuff to bring. I think. Oh boy. And will the door close? That's the next question. Success. Oh my god. All right, off on a little day trip. The first stop is Walmart. We made it to Walmart, which is a savior for being in a foreign country. Yeah, basically Walmart is here for all your needs. Otherwise, everything's very scattered, you know. In America, everything's in one place. So Americans came to build this, so we gotta get it here. 500 pesos divided by 20, what, 25 bucks? So that'd be the equivalent of like a day rental on the beach if you're getting it from the resort or something. By the way, masks are not required in Mexico. However, the American and other foreign companies require them and then everybody wears them the way I'm wearing it now. Julian has been eating food much faster than we expected so we actually have to buy him some more baby food. Well, Walmart was a really, really frustrating experience finding everything. Part of it was the translation. So apparently if you need a baby bottle, there's a specific word just for baby bo bottle. It is not botella de bebe. <laughs> it's like... I keep saying that they, they pointed me all around the store, but the word is biberon for the nipple, because we need a nipple for him still. He can't drink the normal way, so... That took like 20 minutes to figure out. Another thing is this is my first time driving in Mexico. I've driven in, I don't know, five, six countries, but not here. But this place is pretty much Americanized. Um, the driving is very similar. So we made it to 
Todos Santos. We've heard a bunch about this place. Mostly I've seen it on Instagram. Digital nomads have been coming here through the last two years when everywhere else was shut down. And so far it seems pretty nice. It's well developed. More than anything, the weather is really nice. First thing we did in Todos Santos is get Mexican hot chocolate. Because if you may or may not know, chocolate is actually from Mexico and they used to drink it way before Columbus or anyone else from Europe came here. They were drinking lots and lots of hot chocolate. That was like their drink, like the big thing. So we got it and it's amazing. It was so delicious. It's like chocolatey without being too rich and has like a nice cinnamon flavor to it as well. Now we saw so another place on a foodie list that has allegedly the best. So we're going to compare it to the one we got because <laughs> it's that good. We can get two Mexican hey. hot chocolates in a day. The way the place is developed is quite nice. It's kind of a nicer type of tourism than cowboys for a different kind of person. Here you see some nice desert landscaping and no mad chic to prove to you what I was saying that indeed this has been a hot spot for the digital nomads. It's a nice place, I can see why. It's also probably pretty affordable but not cheap. I don't think anything this close to the USA is cheap. All kinds of nice restaurants by the look of it. Yeah, a lot of food, a lot of coffee places, which is essential in a nomad paradise. I kind of want to stay here all day and eat. <laughs> yeah, I think we might do that actually. Yeah. Hola. Do you have a Mexican hot chocolate? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's compare. Yeah, they're pretty similar. Yeah, I they actually are. Too much of a difference. Yeah, I, I cheated and I tasted a little. This one is more spiced, and the other one was kind of more chocolatey, creamy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, they're both good. Um, I don't think that this is drastically better. Like they're both delicious. Yeah. yeah. It's a little bit more cinnamon spice to it. The little, other one was a little bit sweeter, perhaps. But yeah, both very good. So it so yeah. sounds like you can't go wrong with Mexican hot chocolate if you actually get it in Mexico. Or in Todos <laughs> Santos. Yeah. Overall, wherever I can see, we're surrounded by green here, even though we're in the middle of the desert. So it's an oasis. Even though you can see all the cars are very dusty. Again, to mention, it looks very sunny. It is very sunny. But the weather is just fantastic. You feel the cool breeze from the Pacific, which is a signature of the Pacific, at least in the north. In the northern hemisphere, the Pacific comes down with cool air, so it is like AC. And in this desert, it is so good. With that said, though, if you are in the sun, like direct sunlight on you, it is really warm and you will get burned. I actually made that mistake the first day where I was like, oh, it's so warm, but it's not hot enough to burn. And I totally got burned. Like both of my shoulders are like scorched. That's after you made fun of my big sombrero that I bought <laughs> like a gringo. But I can tell you, I noticed that the locals have bigger hats than the gringos. The gringos buy the little pussy hat. <laughs> And the locals get the big one that protects their shoulders too. Your neck and your shoulders, yeah, yeah that's true. So yes, we're both gringos in our own way. <laughs> hey little gringo. This little stroller shade is great. Not only because it shades him, but because he loves chewing on this little string. <laughs> if you're wondering what it's like going around Mexico with a stroller, well, we don't know about the whole country, but these tourist destinations that we're going through are decent, not fully compliant with the whole ADA thing. Depends on where you are. I would say Cabo, like by the marina, was great. It has a really wide, smooth sidewalk. It was much easier. This, you know, it's not the worst, but it's also not the easiest. It's also a good thing we brought our heavy-duty stroller, which is the only stroller we have, by the way. I know a lot of people have multiple strollers. Yeah, you know, this is a travel system stroller and car seat, and we are making use of it. The car seat is trapped in the back of the rental car right now, and we did plan to rent here. So it's working out. It's freaking hard sometimes. But in the meantime, this is a really great little town. There are lots of little restaurants and shops. The shops all have really cute crafts and, you know, clothes and things. So it seems like a really nice place if you're looking for art. Right now we're looking for ceviche somewhere down there. Here's another challenge we have is crossing roads here. Yeah, they don't always stop. It was only a matter of time till we see chickens running around Mexico. And here we are, it's a family. Oh, watch out, watch out. <laughs> oh, they made it. Okay, somewhere around here should be ceviche. Queremos ceviches. ¿Qué tipo es lo más popular aquí? Es una orden como para dos personas. Okay, para dos, sí. Perfecto. 
Julian's way of learning the world is scratching every texture that he can get his hands on. Scratching and putting in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Julian is ready for ceviche, but he won't have any. It's mixed though, which is several kinds of stuff. I like the way it's seasoned, yeah. It's almost like a salsa, but with fish inside of it. Really good. It's also interesting that ceviche is not really from Mexico. It's from South America, yeah, Peru. like Peru. Mm -hmm. But we do it pretty well here. One thing people should know is that Mexican fishing villages are fantastic. So good. Beaches are great there, but the seafood is just up there with the best in the world. Also funny because Seattle is also really known for seafood, and we do have a lot of it, but it's different kind of seafood once you come further down south. So we're making sure to get our fill of seafood. Well, that was delicious, as I have come to expect from anything that Eater recommends. I actually appreciated this was kind of a hole in the wall. It wasn't super fancy, it was kind of unassuming, and we were actually one of the first people to dine in there before a bunch of other people came, and the food was so good. But now we're walking back toward the Centro area, and we're taking another road. This was a lot more sandy, kind of a dirt road. When we were driving into town, this is one of the first things that we saw this really awesome hotel. I'm assuming it's a hotel anyway, but look at that architecture. All right, we're really curious about what's in this building, so we're gonna go check it out. It's very posh. So the building is indeed that Oyster Bar restaurant, which is kind of the center part of it, but there's actually a bunch of galleries and little shops on the side. So you can walk in to check out the galleries and walk through the back, which has this really awesome garden. There's a lot of seating, which I'm assuming is associated with the restaurant, but there's yeah, just really great landscaping and flowers everywhere. We found really nice clean grass for Julian. It's not muddy, it's not wet. So it's the first time he's ever been on grass and he's acting so unsure. He's like touching and... <laughs> Where we live, the grass definitely is pretty wet and muddy and it's not ideal to be on most of the time. Even in the summertime, it can be pretty wet. <laughs> <laughs> so tentative. <laughs> Okay, we drove and we drove in our little car on the sand and dirt and we got to some place looking for the beach. Now it's straight up sand, so I don't trust the car anymore. And I'm walking through sand trying to find the beach and at least see it, because um, we won't be able to get to it. Julian is sleeping. So one thing to know, I, you think Toro Santos is a beach town, but the beach is way out of town. There's something there, a little bit of development on the beach, but it's not like the town is on the beach. It's at least a few miles. And interestingly, we're here in Baja on an overcast day. Here we go, the Pacific Ocean. People ride horses and dune buggies around here. It's one of those big Pacific beaches. Adventuring today with a little car and a baby, pretty funny, but it's what you gotta do. You can't put your life on hold just because you hit a baby. And even if you do, what kind of life is that for your kid, you know, sheltered and not really full of experiences and adventures. He will grow up to be a nerd that way and be afraid of everything. I much prefer to be able to offer him an experience that is rich instead of sheltering him. Ah, yeah, I could see how on this huge strip of sand you can make nice resorts, which exist around here. But we're not here for that long. We're just coming on a day trip. The sun is breaking through. Do you think, do you think this house gets any running water right there? I really, really wonder. Right on the edge. Behind it is all green, so it's an oasis, but how do you get water all the way down here? It's a solid house with an RV and everything. I don't know. No elevator here. here at a sushi restaurant and you might think it's kind of odd to be having sushi in Mexico but this was a recommendation from Eater and it's supposed to be sushi with a bit of a Mexican flair and we get a pretty nice overview of everything around us 
We're having some unique take on sushi here with Mexican flair. So the first one we had were the curacanes, crab and mango and avocado wrapped in a fish and topped with an aioli sauce. Yeah, and then we have some rolls over here and tataki, which is basically seared fish, thinly sliced, with a bunch of seaweed, cilantro, and some kind of red spice, so it's kind of fusion. The spicing is Mexican, while the rest is Japanese. Mm -hmm. I like it, I actually quite like it. It's I'm really curious about the sushi here. It has like, I think, uh, boiled pepper on top. Yeah, That's let's really find good. out how good that is. It's good, it's very subtle, mm -hmm. but it's good. I do like it. This is how vlogging is sometimes. You just have to hold the baby or do what you can to keep them happy and still keep on traveling and eating. But so far we've sampled all the dishes and my favorite has actually been the tataki. It has, you know, a lot of flavor and spice to it. I think, I, yeah, you see some of the chili powder there on the side, but that's what's making the sauce all red. Yeah, I get the tataki pretty much every time I see it on the menu, but this is the most flavorful one I've ever had. Mm -hmm. It has a nice spice, but it's really subtle. It kind of like builds on itself, I guess. Like it's there, but it's not like a kick in the face. It's not like wasabi, it's its own kind of thing. So we left Todo Santos just now because we're running out of daylight and in this little town there's actually more to do than we were able to. So we will be back, it's interesting enough. However, it's a bit of a paradox because the beach is so far, it's not really a beach town. We read there's a proper beach like 15 miles away where the fishing boats go and we don't even have time to stop there. Um, so food and shops, very well done in downtown. The rest is a mystery to us. We're now in San Jose del Cabo, which is the other side of Cabo. And so far we actually really like it. At least the part that we drove through, which I think is kind of the tourist zone, it has kind of a colonial European feel. And I love European style. <laughs> Makes sense. I'm not surprised. No Denny's for me or McDonald's. <laughs> We're looking for a place that's supposed to have coffee from all the coffee growing regions of Mexico. So that should be pretty neat. Not very easy access here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. A little tricky, thanks. I got my Chemex. When I used to drink coffee, I would make myself pour overs over all the time. The only difference is that I replaced the paper filter of the Chemex with metal because I could taste the paper. I had gotten to that level of being particular and then I quit. Uh, but now I'm drinking because we couldn't sleep last night. you had any doubt that we're in Mexico. <laughs> there you go. You always have to appreciate the size of flags in Mexican towns. It's quite amazing. Here we have the colorful sign with the city name, which seems to be the case in most Mexican places. But yes, we are in the plaza, a very hot, sunny plaza in San Jose del Cabo. But it's big. And the nice thing about plazas is that there's like benches, there's trees. There, you know, it's meant to be a gathering place to socialize and to you know, meet people, which is great because like a lot of American cities don't have that. Yeah, but most of them do not. They just have this whole main street thing that is driving street and I don't like it at all. The um, Mexican cities based on the Spanish style have done this well. And I love coming to their plazas every time I come to Mexico. Right now we're looking for a late, late breakfast or lunch at this point at a bakery, which should be right around here. Okay, food just came, it looks good. And Julian is being calm for the moment, so we better eat fast. I'm having some kind of dried Spanish meat with avocado and egg. The meat smells good, let's see how it tastes. I like it, it's interesting. It makes me think of um, the way nomads used to prepare their meat under the horse saddle, so that's how it cooks. I can definitely taste that it's been dried before but it has like a really nice kind of salty flavor to it. But yeah, it's really interesting. It's kind of a light flavor, it's not very intense. I have tostelis, which I've never had before, but I guess they're like gorditos. Tetela? Tetela? Yes, tetelas. I don't remember the name, tetelas. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a little uh, Indian thing. What's the name again in, in the Indian it's kind cuisine? Kind of like a samosa, Yeah. at least the way it looks. Okay, first bite. This one's filled with, I think, some kind of pepper. 
So you can definitely taste the pepper inside of it. And the outside is nice and crispy. So I would definitely eat this again. Right now is the eternal struggle of traveling in hot countries where the middle of the day is a little unbearable, shade is minimal. And we are traveling through, so we don't have a room to go sleep in for siesta time. So we need to figure out what to do. But um, we're in this downtown, kind of probably going to check out all the little shops and stuff mm -hmm. since they're shaded inside. And I like that in this town, they don't try to hassle and hustle you the entire time, like in Cabo San Lucas. So it's a much more relaxing experience to go around the shops. Well, it's pretty nice. Right next to where we had lunch, there was a pharmacy right outside, which is where we got the biberon. So really liking how convenient things are so far. Speaking of the pharmacies, though, one of the creepiest things about Cabo has been that there are literally hundreds of fake pharmacies everywhere, especially downtown Cabo San Lucas. They all say, hey, pharmacy, pharmacy. There's like three to four on a single corner. And I had to actually get something to decongest my nose. And I go in, ask them for nose drops. And they're like, no, we don't have such a thing. But do you want Xanax or, or um, you know, Percocet or Valium or all the <laughs> prescription drugs from America? By the way, they're fake. And otherwise, how would they get them at that price? Um, so it's some um, drug hustle of fake drugs and fake pharmacy going on at a large scale here. A sign code or I'm saying there's ice cream with mezcal, so that's got to be interesting. Do you even like mezcal? I don't like mezcal. I don't either, but I guess we're going to try it anyway. We saw a sign that said ice cream with mezcal and we haven't hit any sweets this whole trip. Iron discipline, but that sounds nice. And I actually tried it. It's quite good. And I got roasted coconut on top. So I normally don't like mezcal. That's pretty good. Yeah. It's hard to describe. I mean, it's mezcal, so you know what that tastes like. That's what it tastes like. Yeah. But it's very uh, subtle. It's not too sweet. Yeah. Which is nice. The coconut is actually a good touch. So we're walking down Calle Morelos here. And it's a continuation of that street that we were just on. Looks like it's a little short, but it keeps going for a little while. And the vibe is really, really nice. I wish that Cabo, the other Cabo was like this. True, yeah, we have been here a little, but we already know next time we'll be coming to stay here instead. Mm -hmm. The only issue we have seen so far is that here the geography is more disjointed, which is what made me book the other Cabo, meaning that town and the beach are far away. You got to drive. So you couldn't enjoy boat on foot like we are doing in Cabo San Lucas. And we have to be able to do that with our baby because otherwise it's too cumbersome to move around. So we're visual artists and we so often gripe that in Seattle in particular, but often in the US, everything is so plain and lackluster. Look at how they do interiors and facades in Mexico. You see the plants going up all the way. You see the balconies ornate, things are hanging hearts. You have lanterns with a um, nice ornate style Victorian, I think. And then even here. They paint the exterior, they use these tiles just, because, just to make the stairs look nice. And this is actually something that you see a lot in Spain and parts of Europe as well, but you don't really see it too much in the US, sadly. Yeah, no ornaments. And you see here the grand entry with a garden in there, and you feel like you're entering a magical aesthetic place, right? While that's not the case in the way they design stuff in the north. The garden is just fantastic. Wow. Well, if I have it my way, next time we stay here. So apparently we're walking through the arts district, which is pretty cool because not only are the shops kind of selling you art, but the buildings here look like art in themselves, which is really awesome. I can't think of another arts district besides the one in Bulgaria that we went to in Plovdiv that is like that. That's true, there are lovely arts districts all around the world, but it's funny that one of the nicest ones we've ever seen is in Baja, California, which is a desert in the middle of nowhere, practically. So it's really hot and we're not really sure what to do. So we're kind of waiting for the sun to cool down. And in the meantime, Julian is sleeping. Sleeping down there. <laughs> he's actually pretty comfortable and he's in the shade. There's a nice breeze. So it's actually the best place for him to take a nap right now. When we got back, his car seat, which you know is right on this side, the passenger side was so hot. We didn't want to put him in there. So we're letting the car seat cool down while he gets a nap and we just get to chill here in the shade. This is what it's like traveling with kids right now. 
well, no one travels 24-7, you know. You gotta sit down at night. Well, after Julian's nap, we went on a little drive towards the beach. We're trying to see what's over here by the water. Yeah, so this is a functional marina. In fact, the marina for San Jose del Cabos. And quite a bit of people are here. And on the other side is where the coffee shop is and some restaurants where we'll stop and have our dinner and maybe find guac for Julian because we're down to one package of his food. <laughs> um, but he can eat the guac. Guac and limes. Yeah, he does eat limes too, apparently. So we kept walking and it looks like this is the closest beach to town. Looks like it's free. There's a parking on the edge there and there's a kind of a grassy area with like picnic shelters, fish cleaning stations, and down here you've got the sandy area with uh, cabanas. But yes, this is the beach, the closest to San Jose del Cabos. They don't have much of a beach. On the other direction, there's something called the hotel zone, zona hotelera. Yeah. Uh, but there I see big ass resorts on the map and it's a little different. This is more where the locals are. Well, I was just wondering if we we're going to find some vendors down by the beach, and indeed we have. We've in fact found the elote man. <laughs> That's right. Queremos dos sel elotes. It's dripping hot sauce, so it can't be bad, right? Mm. Yeah, good. The cheese and hot sauce. I got mine in a vaso. It's a little cleaner this way. So good. Trader Joe's has this elote seasoning and it tastes almost exactly like this. Now that we're near the beach and all that, I, I feel nicely relaxed and going around these dirt roads and figuring things out. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling decently adventurous, which mm -hmm. makes me happy because this is our first international trip with our baby. Mm -hmm. We never ever want to stop adventuring, so you just want to do it in the limit that is wise when you have an infant at first. It's also our first international trip since COVID. Oh, so, that's true. Yeah, for a couple of reasons, this is a big deal for us. Yeah, so Baja has been delivering, honestly. I feel good here. Julian ate most of the food that we brought for him for the day trip. And we're having to fill in with avocado, which is a super food. And we ordered guacamole. The only thing is they don't have a little spoon, but we're using the little tip of the spoon and he's eating it quite well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, what we've noticed is if it's chunky, he spits it back, but then he works it out. Well, in the meantime, here we have our ceviche oh, wow. verde, which is, yeah, ceviche, and then they added avocado, olives, cucumbers, and capers. Here we go with the ceviche verde. I'm not sure you're gonna like it. Pesto, yeah, mm -hmm. I saw that, but I was like, I'll give it a try. I wasn't sure about the pesto either, but it is pretty heavy on the pesto. So if you like pesto, this is good. If you don't, it might be a little bit iffy. Well, but it's an interesting take on ceviche. I would never have thought to put pesto on it. I added lots of lime on this pesto ceviche. It's pretty good this way. So we got shrimp and chips. Nice, the sauce is kind of like a barbecue spicy sauce. Yeah, I really like batter. You can kind of see it right there. Pretty light. I think that might even be panko. So that's kind of the Asian influence on it. But yeah, that's delicious. Mmm, that is good. Yeah, right? It's good. It's different. Well, that was a really good meal at El Marinero Borracho, which actually ended up being on our list of places to eat. And now I'm really tired. I had a beer. Maybe that's what has me tired, but I also didn't sleep. I remember when I was five, which is, what, six times more than Julian? <laughs> I was telling my parents, I never get tired, I'll never get tired. Well, I'm freaking tired now. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Baby, you're standing, look at you. Look at you, look at you. Uh, look at you, uh, you're standing. Uh, all by yourself. Oh. Oh. Crazy boy. You're right. He's gonna stand in Mexico. Well, well, well. Well, it may not look like it, but we're here to find a farmer's market here in the dust pit. 
We're just outside of San Jose del Cabo, the downtown central, and this is where the Saturday market happens. I guess it's only going until May, November through May, so we're just barely missing it. Funny we're enough, there's. It. Theirs is over winter and ours is over summer. Mm -hmm. They don't do this in the summer when the weather is hellish. It looks good to me. It's like in a fairground, I think. It's nice and breezy today. I love that. <laughs> it feels really good. Yeah, we're not roasting yet. Once again, we have to prefix what we say by we're not hippies, but we love farmers markets. So much to the point that they're kind of a requirement to have in a place we live. Are you excited at the market? Are you kind of like shocked that there's so many people? <laughs> I really, really like the look of the produce. Quite amazing how much good stuff they grow here in Baja, in the mm -hmm. desert. Oh, there's mole and pozole, chilaquiles, oh my god. And a coffee, oh, I'm going for a coffee first. Hola, senor. Um, uno cafe. Un cafe, si. 45 pesos. I return when I'm done? Okay, gracias. I actually really love that because I hate drinking from these chemical made plastic cups and they give me a ceramic mug to walk around the market with. I have kind of quit coffee. I have it once in a while these days, but I'm enjoying Mexican coffee a lot. Yeah, it's good. This is a very different style from yesterday, but it's yeah. actually delicious, yeah. Mmm, well that's good. Yeah. yeah, the coffee's been really good. Yeah, bread looks good, everything looks good. I really like this method of making their food that I've seen before when I travel. Sometimes it's ceramic, sometimes it's metal, but it creates the best flavor. Are you enjoying the market in Mexico? It's really nice. There are lots of little chicos like you. I saw one younger than you. We even found a little seat with shade for everybody. We did. So I don't even know what this is actually. That's why I ordered it. It's like a tla tlacoyo. Tlacoyo. I really want to see a huge return to ceramics, which is the original way since the dawn of civilization. We don't need plastic. And once again, I'm not a hippie. <laughs> Okay, so I broke off a piece here. It's stuffed with uh, frijoles or beans and covered with, it's almost like a fresh salsa, like really chunky, and also some cotija cheese. It's nice because it's nice and warm with the beans and the tortilla, but on top we have that fresh salsa, which is a really nice thing that I like about Mexican food. We always seem to blend some kind of fresh element. Everything looks so good. Yeah, look at that. We're gonna need mm -hmm. forks. Yeah. Now you just eat it like a pizza. What's okay. the name of this dish? Um, volcan. Volcan? Like a volcano. Volcan, oh. okay. Yeah. okay. If you eat it with a chicken, but shredded chicken and, and beans, mm -hmm. it's a tostada. Mm. This is like a volcan. Mm. Oh, that chicken is so good. We got chicken and cactus and mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Very saucy. It's on like a hard corn tortilla with some cheese on, on the um, below it. And really good. We have been teaching ourselves to do Mexican slow-cooked meats. Yeah, it's very flavorful, tender, slow-cooked chicken. Love it. Tepache, fermented Mexican drink. Really? That's what it says. I have to hear that. From Sinaloa, where El Chapo is from. Sinaloa is on the other side of the sea, pretty much. It's actually a really good state, but it's pretty much entirely ruled by the cartel. Mm. And so I really want to travel it, but it's really dangerous. But Mazatlan is there and a lot of people from America go there a lot. So I think that place is safe. All right, we get this goblet of fermented pineapple juice. They say it's traditional. I don't know if that's true, but it's amazing taste. Mm. It has that topping of spices on top of the edge. It's very nice. Definitely tastes like pineapple with a nice little salty flavor to it. It's not very spicy, it doesn't taste fermented or alcoholic or anything like that, but it's really, really good. Gracias, senor. Very good. Muy bien. Muy bien. We're picnicking in Mexico at the farmer's market in Cabo. It's nice and breezy. We're not dying of heat. Oh, it's great. 
All right, well, we're wrapping up our time here at the farmer's market. We're gonna get a agua fresca. Yeah, I already have my choice in case it's still available. If not, I'll improvise. Para compartir la con nuestro público la última hora. Hola, uh, dos de maracuya. No maracuya. No maracuya. Okay. Guava para mí. Dos de guava. Dos guava. Guava con pineapple. Sí. Well, they ran out of our top choice, the maracuya, or the passion fruit, so instead we got guava with pineapple. Yeah, good enough for me. Though we will get our maracuya before we leave here. Good guava, though. Guava you don't really see in the Northwest, so. Yeah, it is. Um, some of these fruits, guava, passion fruit, and a few more, papaya, I think. They rot so fast they can't be shipped north. Mm -hmm. Really good guava, though. Well, we wrapped up at the farmer's market and came over to the arts district again. It's actually very close to where the farmer's market is, but a little bit less dusty, which is nice. <laughs> Yeah, there's less dust. It's a windy day, much less hot than yesterday, but the dust is flying around, so the pavement is good to be around. And we want to enjoy some of these really fine spaces they have designed around here in this arts district. And then little Julio will get some water because he hasn't hit any liquids uh, since 5 a.m. So apparently every Thursday there's an art walk here in San Jose del Cabos, except we, you know, weren't here on the Thursday. We went to Todos Santos that day, but if we had been here on a Thursday, this probably would have been a cool place to be. So this church behind me is uh, off of the central plaza. It was the southernmost Jesuit missionary that was established. Although the Jesuits were actually kicked out at some point, so it's no longer Jesuit, but it is a really popular place for weddings. There's actually a wedding going on right now behind me, and it is a pretty big marker for the plaza here. All right, we're here at a restaurant called La Lujita, and I've read a lot about the tacos here. So we have some tacos on order, but the first thing we have is a queso dish. It's like quesos from around Mexico, regional cheese. So there's chunks of avocado, some black beans, as well as some fresh corn tortillas here. Cheese and chorizo and avocado, all good things. A little like salad it. chorizo. The cheese is kind of subtle, but I love it. It's just a big chunk of warm cheese in there. All right, the first one I've got here is the duck mole. That mole is pretty sweet, and you definitely taste that chocolate in the sauce. But yeah, that's different. I've never had a mole duck. Usually mole is chicken or some other protein. The next one is also the most expensive one. It's the one I'm most excited about, but it's like a ribeye, and it's supposed to be done Asian style. There's a little bit of ginger and some poison sauce, but it's actually very light on the Asian flavor. I like to have more, um, maybe sauce or just something. But yeah, nice attempt. The last one we got here is the Baja scallops. I love scallops. These are actually breaded and fried. So it's kind of like a fish taco. You can see lots of cabbage and sauce on top. I think it's like a chipotle mayo. Nice. Scallops are super light. So it's kind of like a nice fishy flavor. It's not too overwhelming. But yeah, I like this one probably the most actually out of all of those. We're here at Playa El Chileno, which is supposed to be one of the best, maybe even the only swimming beach here. Because a lot of these beaches are more rugged and they're actually meant for surfers, but this is supposed to be a pretty gentle beach. And they've developed it nicely. There's a good path, there's good bathrooms, there are palms and shade. Yeah, it's kind of the vibe right now. And we're actually here towards the end of the day. It's about 6 p.m. So most people are leaving, which was great because parking was a breeze and the sun is kind of going down so we shouldn't get scorched. And hopefully, Julian gets to swim in the ocean for the first Oh, dip his toes into the ocean. I'll not swim. <laughs>
plunge felt amazing. Once you come out, it's like you just feel warm all of a sudden. It's that Wim Hof effect, the Iceman effect. Oh, feels so good.